Hello and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. We are uh, on our th fourth cycle. Let's see, one, two, three, fourth. I guess fourth cycle. And uh, quite a few things are happening. We uh, can interact with Fang now. We have a scrap freighter come in and we have potentially sourced out our uh, stabilizer. So let's do the stabilizer first because that's been pending for a bit. The first thing you see on entering is the glint of Toshiro's implants, like a cat's eyes, in the dark of the corridor. He nods you in as you arrive at Sabine's door. The entryway is still dark and you push through this, the sheeting into the surgery. I have it. Sabine stands with a case open in front of them. A set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick up one, rotating it in the warm light. I have no idea how yet again they trail off. We should tra uh, treat this with caution. It looks authentic, but I have no idea if it is, it really is what it appears to be. I'm the test case? That seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have another choice. They gesture for you to sit on the bed. The, stabilar the stabilizer works under a similar principle to an uh, immunosuppressant in a transplant operation, in that it stops your body from rejecting the unfamiliar part of itself. In the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part is each of your biosynthetic organ groups, which over time are identified by your body as foreign material and therefore must be eliminated. Sabine holds up a vial of the would-be stabilizer. However, unlike an un uh, immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Instead, it re-encodes your biosynthetic organs with new protein chains, which act as passcodes within your immune system. The stabilizer refreshes those passcodes, keeping your frame from rejecting all of its own organs, which means, which means the stabilizer should be able to encode any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. They glance away, at least if the stabilizer is genuine. The only way to know for sure is to inject the vial. They begin readying the syringe. I will start with a small dose to limit the risk. Okay, let's do it. Sabine cracks the glass neck of the stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe and you watch as if any sign might emerge from the clear liquid. You barely feel the needle, your frame registering the initial injection but with little response. A sensation begins to spread from the site, a fizzing, trembling wave that disperses through your arm with incredible speed. Your vision goes white, and when it returns, Sabine appears encased in shards of sparkling light that slowly fade into darkness as you settle back into the bed. You swim in darkness, muffled noises, like an argument heard from underwater, prickling waves of cold. When you sit back up, Sabine is sitting in a chair by the window, facing away from you backlit by the glow of their slate. Awake? Yes. The stabilizer is genuine. They sit down beside the bed. I don't know how Yetagan acquired a case of this stuff, but they did. Sabine looks troubled, distracted. You should rest some more, but you are going to have to do that somewhere else. They gesture to the door. I have other patients. Sorry. Sabine nods towards the case. I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You are going to need to pay for your next dose. Silence fills the room, and they return to their glowing slate. Looking around the room, it seems different somehow, as if things have moved or shifted. You wonder how long you have been out. Sabine? Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. You manage to get to your feet and wander out into the hallway. The queue stretches down the flickering corridor. Toshiro stands impatiently by the door and fixes you with a glare as you leave. You lower your eyes as you stumble past somehow faintly aware of the station spinning underneath you. Oh wow, that completely filled her condition. I was thinking it was going to give us a little bit back, but it completely it put us back to stable. Amazing. Let's talk to Feng. Sleeper, Feng catches your attention as you approach the Havenage building, leaning against a bay door to the side of the entrance. You approach. Easier to come in this way. Security, all that. He gives you a look. You know. He slams a button and the bay creaks open. 
blinking lights in the dark behind it. You follow Fang inside. Truth be told, I don't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. The door hisses as it closes behind you. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates, and things you don't recognize that glow with blue screen light. There is a chorus of hums that blends into a single wave of static, filling the dark corners of the room. Fang leans on a server stack and gestures around you. You like it? It's a mess. Hey, this whole station is a mess. This is what I have to work with. He taps a nearby server stack, with, which bleeps in response. This is my treasure trove, all dredged up from the sea of systems we call the eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. He steps over to a towering block, speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station, AE-1. The one Solheim built. We've had to invent new components, repair things we never built, reverse engineer entire subsystems into existence. Residents here look at the eye and think they are seeing a constant and concrete reality, but this place is a system in, a con in constant flux, decaying and growing old, collapsing into new configurations. He walks down between the hardware stacks and you follow. We are keeping this place alive, but also remaking it into something new, dragging it away from those corporate origins. He stops. At least that's what I'm trying to do. He turns back to face you among the flickering machines humming all around you. I know you can see this too, sleeper. All these systems and sections. You can, can't you? I can see it. It makes sense, right? You're between here and there, between the people and their systems. You light this place up like a beacon. That's what I need. You glance at the lights around you, and as you do, they seem to flicker, to realign, to follow your gaze. Fang notices it too. I'm guessing being a beacon isn't always ideal when you are on the run, though. They are tracking me. He pats you on the shoulder. Maybe I can help with that. There's a lot of old growth in this place. Subsystems I can't see. Access protocols lost to time and decay. Secrets. A shitload of secrets. With your help, I can unlock this place. Break off those last ghost limbs of corporate control. He lowers his voice below the hum. Even in Havenage, there's old growth. Those, those whose roots trace back into these, uh, those bad old days. You help me dredge up the past, and I'll see what I can do about that tracker of yours. He winks. What do you say? I'm in. Feng pumps his fist and claps you on the shoulder. He meets your eye. You won't regret it, sleeper. Feng passes you a ragged-looking metal tab. A gift, he smiles. It's a Solheim cipher. I dug it up from the depths of the station. Slot that into an old network gate, and you should be able to pull out all kinds of secrets from the nodes inside. He walks you back to the front of the bay. Start by bringing me whatever you can. Uh, turn up. Use that emulated mind of yours and see what's out there. Let's get a picture of how things are. Those above, he nods at the ceiling, have granted me an acquisitions budget. I can pay you whatever useful uh, for whatever useful data you bring in. I know you need it. He slams the door uh, button again. Keep it quiet and keep it clean, sleeper. I'll see you soon. You step, blinking back out of the into the passage. Those flickering lights still in the back of your mind. So Fangs Bay, deliver data. Okay. Well, we know where we can get some data. Shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, let's do this scrap freighter before we move on and actually spend our dice. Okay, so buy some scrap. Most of what comes in from the Starward belt is corroded trash, but sometimes something valuable can be among the salvage. The big stuff goes to the scrap scrapyard, the valuable stuff to the markets. They'll let you buy a few crates, but not much more. Or we can unload craters or containers, but that's endure and that's not our best stat. Best to leave that to someone else. It's a hundred cryo to acquire more stabilizers, so we're gonna have to uh, definitely hoard as much as we can. All right, well, with all of that done, let's uh, go ahead and spend our um, Solheim cipher. I think the Solheim gate is probably a good place to start. Gate access, negative one Solheim cipher. Uh, did we get anything from that? 
Are these new nodes that I've acquired? We, uh, this is a, we need a four or a two. There's our first four. Storage holds corporate records, most of them corrupted by a failed system purge. If we see a five, I might spend a five. One and three. Two and three. I mean, it, the, the highest I've seen is four now. Okay. But... Uh, well, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and spend our fives at um, Dragos's yard and get some more money. I'm pretty okay with spending these on Cutter Salvage. We don't have a fail uh, possibility here, which is good. We'll spend them both. Uh, that was a neutral outcome, so we didn't get a we didn't get a double um, progression there. But we got scrap components, filters, capacitors, sensors, useful salvage to the right person. Interesting. We'll keep those for now. We might end up selling them. We almost have enough for our next dose of stabilizers, so that's good. Good to keep on top of the things that we uh, you know we're in need of. We are hunted. We don't have a lot of time on that, but we also don't have any more we can do. We should have way more uh, actions in the next cycle, though, hopefully. Nice. Now we're talking. And we have a, a two and a three, so we can actually get some data. Let's um, let's start by getting some food. We're almost uh, fully complete on this fungus fan. Um, all right, so let's start with the data. We definitely have some stuff we can do here. We could start with putting a two on the Solheim node. Bypass. Extract data. Neutral outcome, Solheim data. Okay. We could do another one. Ooh. As you drift back from the node, something latches on you. A thread strung tight around you. It tethers you in place. A taste. The voice makes you shiver. Its source somehow both distant and close behind your ear. You see a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity unknown, uh, astringent, 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 processing, stay silent, please hold, oh, that is quite the look, please hold, the thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a, a tunnel of light circled around you, it is blinding for a moment and then it is gone, as it fades you see a figure, a creature in front of you, its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What are you? The shape paces around you on lithe legs, though there is no ground here to pace on. Entity, identify, origin, serial, cadence. The figure faces you expectingly. Um, stay, stay silent. Refusal. The, the figure's he uh, strange head rotates, brackish, sig brackish signature, of and not of, attempting interface. As the figure speaks, more threads begin to spiral from its head, thick, snaking, vine-like, ribbons that flex and wave. They approach with intent. Run. You kick off and glide away from the cloud, the threads searching after, like, predatory te uh, tentacles. They follow, wrapping the space around you until you are held within a web, a tangle of tentacles, closing in. Stop. Hunter halts its threads, its head twitching. Entity, your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? I'm a person. Incorrect. You are an entity. All at once, Hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste. The one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with fury. 
I will find access. I will interface. Sealed dock? An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Hunter extends a razor-edged thread. I will not be diverted from my task. It glows with murderous intent. Strike. You lash out with all your force. Not a physical strike, but a focusing. A spike of interference. Leaping out like the tip of a spear. Hunter stumbles, shifts, and separates. Wake up. You open your eyes, blinking back into the station light, shaking with fear. Well, that was spooky. I wouldn't mind getting some more data. I know that's maybe maybe that's risky. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that, but <clears throat> it might might be a good way of making some money. I I wouldn't mind spending my threes and twos on on acquiring data. Plus one encrypted key. Mm, that's not really what I want, but it's okay. I'll take it. Okay. Um, so we can come back to Feng and give him some data. Okay. Plus 15 cryoscoping the systems. Progress is made. Let's go ahead and fin finish uh, Dragos's uh, thing, because we're pretty close on that. I might reserve one of... Well, I, I only have fives and sixes, but I might reserve some of my uh, higher up stuff for something else. Neutral outcome, that's uh, unideal, but that's fine. Um, actually, in a way, I'm kind of glad that happened because now we'll we'll ha finish it off with a double. I'm assuming maybe I should have done some forensic trawl before I did this. Because I'm assuming we can't now. The final pieces of the winter light sit in neat piles waiting for the collection shuttle from Havenage. Dragos has managed to sell the remaining pieces of the shipyards. A fact that's hard to forget as he has been telling you about it for the past two cycles. And all that remains is for Havenage to come and collect. You look around at the yard, transformed from when you first arrived. The mostly repaired drones flit back and forth, no longer buzzing unevenly or lost in dark corners. And you scrap the section, uh, and the scrap is section sorted. The system that you and Dragos have put into place over the past cycles paying off. As you look, you notice the glow of pale light from the office by the entrance. That rundown cab of a building which houses all the records and spare equipment. Dragos must be inside, and you get to your feet and walk over to find out when the shipyard collection crew will be here. Knock. Sleeper, come in. You swing open the door and walk in. Dragos is sitting at the small de metal desk. The shipyards told me they, uh, they'd they be here soon. Then they'll hand over the chits and we are set. He writes something with a stylus on his slate, then shuts it off. Of course, we should talk about a bonus. He stands and turns to face you, his face placid. Look. I don't know when the next job is coming in, but this should tide you over for now. He opens his hand to reveal a stack of chits. What's going on here? I said it's a bonus. Take it. Dragos, is, Dragos presses the chits into your hand. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat, and you realize he has prepared what he is about to say. These chits are for you to take and do what you will with them. They are from me, and they are the last I'm going to give you. He pauses. There's no more work for a sleeper in this yard. He folds his arms. I'm sorry, but that's it. You stay in the container as long as you need, but the yard is done with you. He turns away to his terminal. What do you mean? Don't press me, sleeper. This is for your own good. The glassy apertures on Dragos' headset betray no emotion. You need to stay away, sleeper. He pauses, considering his words. Trouble's gonna s going to follow you here, trust me. What do you know? Dragos kick kicks at the floor, frustrated with himself. I'll not be saying any more, sleeper. Dragos suddenly grabs you by the shoulder and drags you out of the office into the yard. He turns you to face a stack of pieces from the winter light, dissected, cut down, totally unrecognizable as a ship. 
You came through that, sleeper. That should have been you, chopped and stacked. His hand trembles on your shoulder. That is what happens here. We cut down broken machines and move, move them on. I didn't cut you down, but I'm sure as hell moving you on. Move you on before whatever whoever killed that ship out there comes to kill me. Kill you? Kill us both. He shakes his head. These ships, they don't get this decommissioned. They don't they didn't break down and dry dock. You think they'd look like that if they did? Someone ended them. That means someone tried to end you, sleeper, and I'm done waiting for them to turn up. We've had our fun, now it's time. He gives you a little shove. Go on. He turns and walks back into the office. That's it, he shouts and goes inside. The silence hangs in the air and you leave with your pockets filled with clinking chits and a strangely hollow feeling in your chest. Drive failed? What do you mean drive failed? Weird. Um, okay. I thought I succeeded the drive, but... Um, alright. Well, uh, what are, what are some options for us? There's some engineering options here. Assist a shipbuilder. Um, not sure what is next. Well, we did get quite a lot of money. Rotunda wetlock. That's just a cycle clock waiting to happen. Um, Sabine's surgery. We can pay for a dose, but we don't need a dose. We could pay for low end gate, but why don't we spend our last six? Wait, what's what was the scrap freighter again? Buy some scrap. Big stuff goes to the shipyard, the valuable stuff to the markets. Is there nothing for I guess Dragos's yard is not even available to us anymore. Wow. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and assist the ship builder? Action complete. Oh, that's not really going to pay off for a while, unfortunately. But that is going to end the cycle. What a kind of miserable way to end um, our, our deal with Dragos. I guess I should have uh, done more of an investigation on that. To, on the white light. Oh well. We've got tons of ones and twos today, which is actually not a bad thing because we can spend those to gather more data. I would like to do that. So let's start with the Solheim node. We got some Solheim data right away. Very nice. Let's get this last bit of Solheim data here. We can spend a two on that. More data. Perfect. Um, I'm not sure where else we could pa potentially get some data. I wouldn't mind doing one more. Let's do a key node here. This node pulses faintly as it mines cryo at a, a glacial play pace, abandoned by the hacker that repurposed it. That sounds like it's just going to be money. I, I don't, I, I would prefer to get like information. Maybe about a yet again agent. That sounds like it could be useful. Uh, Yadagan data. Data cache skimmed from Yadagan hardware. Well, that's useful. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and sell all this data to Feng. I, I think we actually do have enough to uh, progress Feng's story. Scoping the systems and we got some uh, money. Nice. 
Uh, we have something here from Feng. As you enter the bay, Feng is nowhere to be seen. The banks of servers and machines blinks out of the dark in staccato rhythms. Unseeing eyes of the station's digital ghosts. Shitheads! Feng's voice echoes from behind a stack, followed by the hammer of a fist on a metal casing. These sneaky shitheads. Who's sneaky? Sleeper! Feng's smiling head pops out from behind a stack. Just the emulated consciousness I have been eager to see. Come back here. You pick your way between the thrumming stacks, trying not to trip on the loose bundles of cable that blanket the dark floor. Feng is sat in front of a set of monitors, mounted to a stack. Tell me, sleeper, what do you see here? Feng waves at a monitor to his side, glowing with pale lists of information. You lean in closer, looking for the links in the data. The tables seem to be filled with personal information, names, genders, dates, ID numbers, all the markers of an institutional records. Shitheads? Feng laughs. Ah, uh, maybe not all of them, but uh, what kind of shitheads? Solheim. Bingo! He taps at the terminal. I pulled these from the old data you brought in. All employees of the of the eye's original owners. And he leans past you and scrolls the list down. This one. This is a sneaky shithead. He stabs at the screen with a finger. The name reads, Hardin Hurst. Friend of yours? Feng gives you a sideways look. Funny you should say that, sleeper. He drags a stool out beside him and motions for you to sit. There just so happens to be a Hardin Hurst in Havenage. He waits for your reaction. In Havenage? That's it. He's right here on the station now. Feng leans back in his chair. Just think about it. Decades ago, Harden worked on this station as a... Feng leans across to look at the monitor. Senior Strategic Operations Executive. Feng raises his eyebrows at you. Our Harden was keeping the money coming in for Solheim. He defined priority growth initiatives by making sure the extractors they, ex they contracted out to were hooked into a system that outsourced all the risk and kept the profit. Let me read that again. He defined priority growth initiatives by making sure the extractors they contracted out to were hooked into a system that outsourced all the risk and kept the profit. That's a difficult one, but I think I understand. Good old Hardin shuttled thousands of palladium rushed workers into an infrastructure which meant that their cut of the work they did went straight back into Solheim. How do you know that? I grew up here, sleeper. This is my history. I am a child of the Collapse. Feng turns back to his screen, staring hard at the strings of code flickering by. Before I was born, my parents were Solheim contractors. They ate in Solheim canteens, worked on Solheim ships. They breathed Solheim air and slept in Solheim beds. Feng's voice rises as he speaks, his hands fists on the terminal edge. And the work that paid for that existence, the cycles of hard extraction out in the belt, Solheim took their cut. This was a company town, so to speak, and my parents were just another in the long line of freelance contractors willing to risk their lives for a shot at anything other than to poverty. Disposable. This guy, Start stabbing at Hardin once again with his finger. Strategized all that, did the sums, and then somehow, thousands and thousands of cycles later, is still going. Still here, crawling in the walls, like some shithead snake. He survived the revolution. But how? These guys? They were big time. There's a lot of money. Uh, there's a lot money can get you if you are a company man. Feng relaxes a little. But how is Hardin still kicking? I really don't know. He turns to you and smiles. So we, we are going to go find out. Harden is now a big shot in the shipyards. Just a few degrees back around the eye from here. Feng brings up a map of the lower eye. Havenage might be born out of Erlen's evolutionary zeal, but a flat hierarchy it is not. Harden happened to float to the top. Feng zooms in at, on the far yards. Feng grimaces. The thing is, I don't have access to those systems. The shipyard crew is pretty paranoid, and they don't like anyone from systems digging around in their stuff. Plus, we need more than just the name of a Solheim executive. We need proof. Feng holds up a thumbnail-sized drive. That's where this little creation of mine comes in. I call it a ripper worm. He turns the drive between the fingers, between his fingers. It'll rip through any digital storage and spin out a silken thread of filtered data. This one is set on the scent of Hardenhurst. He hands it over. 
Getting into the compound might be tricky. Bing puts a hand on your shoulder, but you, however, have a particular knack for remote access. Feng grins. If you can extract yourself a Havenage cipher from a Havenage agent, they sometimes carry them among their data caches. You can crack open the compound's network and slot the worm in through any open port. You never even need to go near the shipyards. So what do you say? Up for it? What's in it for me? Rooting out a corrupt snake not enough? Find the information and I'll start work on that tracker of yours. Feng scratches at his chin. Anything the worm gets, it'll send it back here to me. There's something wrong here, and I aim to get to the rotten core of it. You leave Feng digging through data among the wires and machines of the old station. As you walk out, you try to imagine the eye as it was, uh, once was. A vast machine running smooth and strong, directed by people like Harden. A vast Solheim-built machine into which thousands poured from the surrogate systems looking for a new life. The hope of a better future, engineered to line someone else's pockets. It's an idea you are intimately familiar with. You think of Harden, still alive, still part of his uh, this place, and wonder if the past is ever truly past. Uh, I don't think we can do anything here, right? Yeah, no. Um, we don't need more stabilizer. We do need some food, though. And we should progress on this as well. Sleeper, Emphis calls out to you, a booming voice that echoes through the corridor. Tell me a story. He throws a handful of chopped mushrooms into his work. The fire leaping up to meet the oil. I see you. Cycle in, cycle out, but we never speak. Tell me a story. What kind? Any kind. He pauses to drizzle something from a plastic bottle into the walk. But one of yours. He looks up at you. Nothing stolen. You pause. The spice is rich in your nostrils and think about the kind of story you'd like to tell Emphis. You look at Emphis, the listener, and imagine he has heard it all before. Perhaps he would enjoy a strange story, something with some spice. Tell him about your dreams. All the sleepers, you tell Emphis, had dreams. Some were simple, memories left over from the emulation process that had become tangled up in their minds and would come out when they sleep. It wasn't rare to hear a sleeper in the dorm scream or cry out in the night. But your dreams, those gray skeletal afterimages of systems and structures, of threads and patterns, weren't like the others. They weren't memories or nightmares, they were reflections of reality. Distorted, yes, but somehow true. You, leaned, uh, you learned back then to keep quiet about them, to let them thro flow through you, flow through your mind like water. That was until now, until you arrived in this place. Now your dreams colonize your waking life. They slip behind your eyelids with every blink. And now you understand they aren't dreams at all, but some process of interfacing, of speaking, of living in another world that flows through this one like smoke through air. You tell him that you do not know if there is a reason for your dreams. Perhaps, you reason, it is just some side effect or particular quality of the frame you inhabit. But whatever it is, it is a gift, and you hope to make use of it. Emphasis finishes cooking and squints a little at you. Sleeper, he smiles. You are quite the storyteller. He eyes you, and you realize that he is trying to gauge how honest you have been in your story. Emphis pa uh, passes you the meal he has cooked, and you take it gratefully. As you eat, he talks. A natural exchange. Thank you, Sleeper. He looks around at the emptying market. But my time is done for today, and I do not want to keep you any longer, so I will make a proposal. He gestures to the plastic boxes of ingredients stacked behind his stall. These are good enough for most, but someone told me a story that made me think a couple of cycles ago. They said that across the gap in the greenway, fresh, fresh mushrooms grow. Have you heard this? No. Neither had I, but I trust the ones who told me. Emphis begins packing up his things. Can you bring me some? I cannot cross the gap and I worry about leaving my things behind. He smiles. I am sure a storyteller like you could handle the trip. I will prepare them for you. 
and if you wish to tell, tell it, be the audience for another story. Agreed. Good. Booms Emphis. Then I will wait for you to bring them. Emphis slides his walk away and straightens up. I will prepare a recipe then, sleeper. Good luck with your foraging. You turn away and walk back into the main market, the rich taste of Emphis food still lingering in your mouth. Stories for food, you think. A trade that seems more than fair. I probably wasted um, food there. TBH. Um, well, let's, uh, we can pay the low end toll. Why not? I don't know. I, I do worry that this is not just a one time payment, but this is every time. So I don't necessarily want to do that just yet. Sell components. Oh, we can sell components here. Why don't we go ahead and do that? And we could potentially buy some components as well. Plus on the trusted trader, neutral outcome. We can buy some from this, this guy here. So why don't we do that? We'll buy a bit of scrap and we'll sell it to our trusted trader and then maybe we'll get something interesting. Ship mined fragment could be reassembled with the right tools and a few more fragments. Uh, neutral outcome. We got more sh ship mined. Okay, so that's scrap allowance spent. And we got three ship mine fragments. No scrap, <laughs> weirdly. I thought maybe we would get some scrap. Raider will stay docked for as many cycles as it takes to offload its haul of scrap and to have energy yards. Um, I could spend a four on unload containers, but that's our weakest stat and also fours are not a guaranteed success. So I'd prefer not to do that. We can go to shipyard um, and we can assist a ship builder. Um, I would like to know there's a where was it build your sh build a ship mine. Where is that? Here. Merchants willing to run the gauntlet of the Helian systems are rare, but those that do always return eventually. So is that where I have to wait on that? Fort exchange? Play the exchange. Risky. we could do that i don't really have anything i don't want to i don't want to take risky dice rolls past the front end but maybe that's what we need to do or we could look for a four was there not a four in the data extraction there's a two and uh, one and three there have an agent we do need to try and get this information because that will help us with fang's quest uh, one and two. We need lower rolls for data. Okay, well, um, I guess I'll just go to the low end. I'm hoping that this is just a one-time payment. Ramshackle Residential District. Play Tavla. The clack of filter caps can be heard in every concourse in the low end as the residents play rotating rounds of this game for cryo. That's These are both risky. Block maintenance. Maintained by the residents, the ramshackle blocks are always in need of repairs. Helping out is a good way to make friends. Let's make friends. Neutral outcome, low ender. That's fine. Um, we can, you know, let's just have a quick look around before we spend our last night. Well, there's Founders Gap, Gap in the Ring Station. To reach the Greenway, you need to pay for a pass, a practical, a practice invented by the spacers moored here. They call it Founders Ferry. 
So I think it is a one-time fee, but it's 150. Um, enter the spoke. Spoke climber. The spoke is layer after layer after layer of dense urban fabric. The only way to explore it is vertically. So that's another thing we can spend um, some dice on. Let's go to the low end and uh, actually let's uh, take a quick look at um, Sabine. In case there, no, it's I, I like to keep an eye on there just to make sure that there isn't a quest there. Um, but let's let's try and make friends. So we'll spend our last die trying to do that. Neutral outcome. Well, that's fine. I don't mind a neutral outcome. Uh, and that's gonna do it for the episode. I have spent all my dice, and so I'll be going home. But uh, also, I'll leave even going home for the next episode because I. I don't want to uh, necessarily do the 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 fluff of sleeping um, in this episode. So if you are enjoying the series, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.